Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inconvenient Truths by Jennifer Zheng. On September the 3rd, the CCP's head Xi Jinping delivered a speech and a symposium to mark the 75th anniversary of the victory of the war against Japan, the World Anti-Fascist War. Toward the end of his lengthy speech, he mentioned, Chinese people absolutely not allowing five times in a row, including not allowing attempts by anyone or any forces to distort the history of the CCP, not allowing anyone or any forces to separate the CCP from the Chinese people, etc. What are the hidden messages behind his five not annoyings? Why do people say that these not annoyings reflect Xi Jinping's panic mode and deepest fears? Today, let's discuss these issues. First, let's watch his first not allowing. So, what is the hidden message of not allowing anyone or any forces to distort the history of the CCP and to vilify its nature and mission? The message is that the CCP feels very much that its true history, nature, and mission will be exposed. One of the biggest lies the CCP told to the Chinese people is that the CCP had led the Chinese people to win the war against Japan from 1937 to 1945 and drove the Japanese invaders out of China. The CCP has been using this big lie as one of the most important foundations of its legitimacy. However, in recent years, especially after the publication of historian Xin Hao Nian's book, Which is the New China? Distinguishing between right and wrong in modern Chinese history, more and more Chinese people started to realize that it was the Kuomintang or the Chinese Nationalist Party that had really fought the war against Japan, while the CCP was just hiding in the mountains, finding opportunities to expand its power and territory, and not fighting the Japanese. Apart from this, another important book published in 2004 titled Nine Commentaries on the Communist Party bluntly points out that the Communist Party is an evil specter that attached itself to the Chinese people and the Chinese nation. The evil specter opposes nature and human nature and relies on violence and terror to gain and maintain power and uses lies to justify violence. Another book published in 2019 by the Epoch Times is titled The Ultimate Mission of Communism. This book points out that the ultimate mission of communism is to destroy mankind. The publication of the nine commentaries on the Communist Party triggered a global quit the CCP movement or Tuidang in Chinese. Many Chinese people inside and outside of China have chosen to quit the CCP and its related organizations, including the Yusnik and the Young Pioneers, with either their real names or aliases. This movement started in 2004. Up to now, over 363 million people have published their statements to quit the CCP and the Epoch Times quit the CCP or Tuidang website. So, what lies behind Xi Jinping's first not allowing is the CCP's deepest fear about its own legitimacy as well as its, as its nature and mission being seen through by more and more people in the world. Now, let's watch Xi Jinping's second not allowing. Any 
、否定和丑化中国人民建设社会主义的伟大成就，中国人民都绝不答应。This not allowing is not allowing anyone or any force to distort and change the road of socialism with Chinese characteristics, deny and vilify the great achievements of the Chinese people in building socialism. This not allowing reflects the CCP's deep fear of people's questioning their system, especially when U.S. President. President Trump repeatedly criticized socialism and vowed that America will never be a socialist country. The CCP has spent an astronomic amount of money to invest in its One Belt and One Road initiative and to promote its China model and a vision of the so-called a community with a shared future for mankind. However, with more and more countries realizing the CCP's hidden agenda attached behind its money, and with so many countries losing so many lives as a result of the CCP's cover-ups of this COVID-19 pandemic, the CCP's China model is quickly losing its appeal. I think. That the CCP definitely feels the pressure. That's why Xi Jinping is, is shouting out loud about not allowing, like someone whistling in the dark. Now let's go to Xi Jinping's third not allowing. 任何人、任何势力，企图把中国共产党和中国人民割裂开来，对立起来。中国人民都绝不答应。This third not allowing can be said to be the deepest fear of the CCP. For many decades, the CCP has successfully attached itself to the Chinese people and the Chinese nation and sucked their blood. For many decades, the CCP claimed that it represented the Chinese people, but never allowed Chinese people to speak for themselves. On the contrary, it persecutes the Chinese people all the time. That is the situation inside China. Outside of China, the international world also confused the CCP with China and the Chinese people, mistakenly believing that the CCP and the Chinese people are the same thing. Behind this confusion is the admission that the CCP's regime is the legitimate government of China, as if it were elected by the people. However. The situation has recently started to change dramatically. Although the CCP has been trying very hard to suppress, downplay, and cover up the quit the CCP movement, it can hardly hide the fact that more and more Western politicians are differentiating the CCP with China and with the Chinese people. In his speech at the Nixon Library on July 23, U.S. Secretary of State Pompeo said that I grew up and served my time in the army during the Cold War, and if there is one thing I learned, communists almost always lie. The biggest lie that they tell is to think that they speak for the 1.4 billion people who are surveilled. Oppressed and too scared to speak out, many China observers have noticed that Secretary Pompeo has stopped using China when he talks about problems created by the CCP. Instead, he now always used the CCP. Furthermore, he no longer addresses Xi Jinping as the Chinese president, but refers to him as General Secretary Xi Jinping. This means that the U.S. government recognized the fact that the CCP doesn't represent China or the Chinese people. The CCP's party secretary may not necessarily be the legitimate president of the country, like in other democratic countries. 
I know some people are lobbying for the U.S. to designate the CCP as a criminal and a terrorist organization. If Secretary Pompeo has stopped referring to Xi Jinping as president of China, that's a huge issue for the CCP, as that means the U.S. might one day declare that the CCP's regime is not a legitimate one. So, what is hidden in the third not allowing of Xi Jinping is the CCP's biggest fear that it will no longer be able to take the Chinese people and the Chinese nation as their hostages and to do evil. It can no longer exploit the 1.4 billion Chinese people, treating them like slaves while sacrificing their interests and even their lives to save itself. Wouldn't you say that Xi Jinping has very good reason to be in a panic mode? 任何人, 任何势力, 企图通过霸凌手段, 把他们的意志, 强加给中国, 改变中国的前进方向, 阻挠中国人民, 创造自己美好生活的努力, 中国人民都绝不答应。the fourth not annoying is actually an indirect response to the domestic and international calls for a democratic China, as well as the Trump administration's call for reciprocity in trade and other relations with China. The hidden message in this one is that the CCP wants to continue its old ways, which is to take advantage of other countries and to make huge profits using unscrupulous practices. When other countries, especially the U.S., start to talk about making the CCP abide by international rules, the CCP feels like it's being treated unfairly it has become accustomed to having a free ride. 任何人, 任何势力, 企图破坏中国人民的和平生活和发展权利, 破坏中国人民同其他国家人民的交流合作, 破坏人类和平与发展的崇高事业, 中国人民都绝不答应。the fifth not annoying reflects the CCP's current situation of having encountered a lot of diplomatic setbacks. Recently, U.S. Secretary of State Pompeo has been visiting U Europe frequently and has successfully convinced some European countries to abandon the idea of working with the CCP's Huawei on 5G construction. The U.S., Czech Republic and some other countries have enhanced their, the relationships with Taiwan as a countermeasure to fight back against the CCP's aggressive expansion. With the U.S. Under Secretary of State Case Crack's possible visit to Taiwan by the end of September, the diplomatic relations between the U.S. and Taiwan will be enhanced to another new level. In the Indo-Pacific, Southeast Asia, South China Sea and the Taiwan Strait area, the US, Japan, Australia, India and Taiwan have joined forces to tackle the CCP's expansion. The US and Australia have clearly expressed their stance that the CCP's territory claim in the South China Sea is illegal and they would not recognize it. The U.S. has also increased its, its military presence in the South China Sea. Some even say that the U.S. might someday destroy the artificial islands built by the CCP. So, looking at the global situation, we can see that the CCP is under siege from all fronts. That's why many China observers say panic and despair in Xi Jinping's five not allowance. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and check out my other videos. Thank you. See you next time.